Hold the Line with Mike Solon is sponsored by Heart to Heart Medical Supply. Heart to Heart is an American company offering FDA-registered respirator masks at wholesale prices. Heart to Heart offers free same-day shipping, and by using the promo code COVIDSAFE at checkout, you can save 10% off your entire order. Visit hearttoheart.com. That's H-A-R-T, the number two, H-A-R-T dot com. Hearttoheart.com. This is what happens when you defund a fantastic police department. They have dis- decimated this police agency due to politics. And that's strictly on the shoulders of the Seattle City Council. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. This is where we hold them. This is where we fight. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish. Not a fight. Hold the Line with Mike Solon is sponsored by StopDefunding.com. The senseless trend of defunding police departments must be stopped. Over 200,000 reasonable citizens have already signed our petition, and we need your help. Visit StopDefunding.com and add your signature to help us protect public safety. Now more than ever, our voices must be heard. Speak up at StopDefunding.com. Hey, welcome back to Hold the Line with Mike Solon, episode two of this podcast that I think is going to connect our community together with the police officers that serve professionally here at a level we've never had before. And I want to thank Victoria Beach for the inaugural guest of our podcast that, from what I hear, the feedback from people is overwhelmingly positive. And uh, we're going to have Victoria back on because I think we were just scratching the surface uh, with her, and uh, the conversation, I think, can go to places that uh, are very, very needed at a time in our society in terms of policing and our community. So thanks to Victoria again, and look forward to having her on. And thank you for watching and subscribing to Hold the Line with Mike Solon. You can find us on uh, any platform that you receive your podcasts, also on YouTube. You can reach us on Twitter, Hold the line with Mike Solon or on my personal Twitter account at real Mike Solon. And uh, we're going to keep going with this thing because I think it's a great platform. And with your feedback and your participation, we can really make a difference in our community. But the purpose of this podcast, I want to just highlight probably something that to me is one of the most hypocritical examples of what we're experiencing here in the city of Seattle by our elected officials. And nobody should be a victim of a crime. Not one of you. And the proposed legislation by Councilmember Herbold, the public safety chair of the city of Seattle City Council, is so dangerously naive that it has the potential to put Seattle over the cliff to utter lawlessness for political purposes. Basically making well over 100 misdemeanor crimes non-enforceable for three affirmative defenses. Number one would be poverty. Somebody committed the crime because they were experiencing poverty. Two would be they committed the crime because they have a substance abuse problem. And the third, you committed the crime because you're experiencing mental health issues. And you don't have to show proof of your affirmative defense to not be held accountable for those crimes. You just say, I've got a symptom of it. But that same individual, Public Safety Chair Lisa Herbel, today was victim of one of those crimes that she's looking to decriminalize. And what did she do? She called 911 and asked for Seattle police officers for help. Those same officers that she's looking to defund and lay off. If that is not the epitome of hypocrisy, by an elected official. I don't know what is. 
we're in a time of 2020 where upside is down and down is up. And according to Lisa, anybody that commits a misdemeanor crime, and particularly the one that impacted her today personally at her dwelling in West Seattle, shouldn't be held accountable. But yet, she calls the police with whom she defunded for help to investigate that crime. Let that sink in. This is who we're being led by. This is who we're being governed by. This is the same individual that several weeks ago advocated for laying Seattle police officers based upon the color of their skin. That's a crime. That's a violation of civil rights. And by the way, where was the ACLU of Washington defending officers for that egregious statement by Councilmember Herbold at the time, which she publicly put out on Twitter. Of course, there's no recourse there, and there's no defense for us by the ACLU. Shows you where they are with their level of activism, not just here locally across the state, but nationwide. Start digging into them. Start connecting the dots of when, right when COVID hit, they were requesting 16,000 inmates be released from our prisons. And you're looking at to decriminalize everything in Seattle, and they want to do it across the state and across the nation. Connect the dots to this activism. And yet, that same elected official who defunded us, advocated to lay off officers based upon their skin color, herself becomes a victim of a crime, a misdemeanor crime, a property crime, and calls 911 for police help from the Seattle Police Department. Let that sink in. And nobody should be a victim of a crime. And I feel sorry for her because she's going to have to pay for that window to be repaired. And the officers did respond and they were professional from what I hear. But during the middle of the investigation, because resources are so desperately needed and they don't exist because we've been defunded and officers are fleeing this agency because they don't feel supported, the officers that were there investigating her crime, investigating her call for help, they had to immediately leave because a help the officer call came out in West Seattle at the junction because officers were fighting a person who was in crisis. So just for your education, anytime there's a help the officer call in the city of Seattle, every police officer that is available to respond must drop what they're doing and go help that officer. Because it's a very rare circumstance an officer puts out a call for help. And when you say the word help, that's at a red alarm flag that is the highest, highest request for immediate assistance. Because a human being doing the job of policing is in desperate need of help. They can't handle the situation. So those officers had to leave Lisa's house, and they had to go respond to the junction to help that officer. And from what I understand, that officer is okay and the community member is okay. But Lisa's going to have to wait for enough resources to become available to go back to her place this evening and complete the investigation. So Seattle, this is who you've elected. They've unfortunately been a victim of a crime a crime they're looking to decriminalize, and yet they have the gall to call 911 for help, get police investigative uh, services there. So um, if you need to get involved, I suggest you do, because if her proposed legislation becomes the ordinance, the law of the land, lawlessness will get even more significantly uh, profound in terms of our public safety, because we are in an emergency situation in terms of public safety issues in this city. This is what happens when you defund a fantastic police department. They have decimated this police agency due to politics, and that's strictly on the shoulders of the Seattle City Council. Shameful. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to Hold the Line with Mike Solon. I look forward to having another great guest as we are days away from filming that. If you have guest ideas, please let me know. 
I'd be happy to take your feedback. You know how to reach me on the platforms I suggested. You can also email me at my SPOG email address. And we're going to enhance, hold the line with Mike Solon and try to streamline some things, make it a little bit more accessible in terms of communication with me to you because your comments are going to help me improve communication and your feedback is absolutely valid and warranted and I uh, take it all. So keep on what you're doing. Become that reasonable activist. Get involved. And remember, you have the power to stop what's occurring in this city and what's going across our nation and stand up for public safety. The great men and women that do the job of policing will continue to do the job amongst all this false narratives that are besieging our great profession and that are destroying the Seattle Police Department based upon that activism. Help us push back, save this city, save this department, and restore reasonable activism in the city of Seattle because right now we're being swallowed by unreasonable activism. Hold the line with Mike Solon. Until next time.